to the program. Uh, if you've seen a motion picture called The King of Comedy, it deals with a gentleman whose only desire in life is to perform stand-up comedy on a late-night talk show. Tonight, on this program, we have the gentleman who wrote the screenplay. His name is Paul Zimmerman. And for the first time anywhere, uh, anywhere in America, anywhere in North America, uh, Mr. Zimmerman is going to get uh, a chance to perform stand-up comedy. Uh, and he is, this is a, a first for him and for us. Please welcome now the man who wrote the motion picture, the king of comedy, Paul Zimmerman. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the applause, but I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what is this ding-dong doing on national television? Well, I don't blame you. I mean, you people have certain standards for what you watch on television. And I want to tell you up front, I'm not going to be able to meet them. Sorry. For one thing, I do not have hemorrhoids. I, I know that's a popular show business gambit. You get hemorrhoids. You go national with them, coast to coast. Paul Zimmerman of Upper Makefield talks about his hemorrhoids. But I have no hemorrhoids to talk about. In fact, I don't lack confidence in my laxative. I have, I have no disgusting personal habits to share with you. I'm sorry if you're disappointed in that. But you're thinking then maybe, just maybe, he's a deviant. He's one of those perverts. They play all the talk shows. And why not? It takes no special talent. All you have to do is reach out, reach out, and touch someone. I think it's sort of peculiar, don't you, that the phone company is encouraging that kind of behavior? That doesn't happen to be my case. Uh, I did call the Donahue show a couple of weeks ago. I said, how would you like the screenwriter of The King of Comedy on your show? And they said, fine, but we want to dress it up a little. We need a grabber, something a little special, you know? And I said, OK, anything you want. And they said, fine, you're, you're going to undergo a sex change operation. We've never had a transsexual screenwriter on our show. And I said, that's a little much to ask for, you know, to promote a movie. But then this happens to writers all the time. And I'm a team player. But that was before I found out what they do to you. Do you know what they do to you in those operations? Do you know? They chop your beard off. They <laughs> chop it right off. And it doesn't grow back. Don't let them tell you it grows back, because it doesn't. Once it's gone, that's it. And I thought, hey, I'm not ready to make that kind of commitment. Uh, after all, who ever heard of a screenwriter without a beard? So where's the laugh machine? I was told there was going to be a laugh machine. Yeah. At any rate, you're thinking, no disgusting personal habits. They've already had somebody balance something on his face. He's not a deviant. Maybe he betrayed his country. That's a popular way of getting on TV. Look at Watergate. That wasn't a break-in. That was the launching of, an, of a whole entertainment industry. Yeah. Television shows, movies, 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 television shows. You, you, did you read where Richard Nixon is getting his own series on cable? How many of you have heard about that? I'm not kidding. Oh, you think that's terrific, huh? Actually, they taped the first show, and I hear it's very revealing, except somebody erased the first 18 and a half minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, it wasn't me, but I thought, you know, if those guys can get on television, why not me? I'm a writer. I paid my dues. You know, 18 years I've been at it. Only reason you haven't heard of me before this is I wouldn't sell out. No, I, I would not sell out. Not until now, anyway. Uh, you know, I went to work for Disney. You know Frosty the Snowman? Anybody here? You, you've heard of him. You don't know my Frosty. Frosty in the Big Rain? Frosty in the Angry Snow Shovel? You know those? Frosty goes to Miami? They said, that's much too depressing. I said, well, I'm not going to change it. So I sat down. I came up with something else, a reindeer named Rudolph. Yes, I am the creator of Rudolph the Hard-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> of Rudolph the Hard-Nosed Reindeer. He's a very tough customer. 
You know, he still has that enormous electronic deformity at the end of his face. Uh, and, uh, and the reindeer, they tease him. He's, he still has, oh, the reindeer, they tease him, they cut him out, they beat him up, you know. Yeah, you're my kind of crowd, nice and bloodthirsty. So, you know, when Santa comes along, when Santa comes along, he thinks, I uh, see so you can make it too good. When Santa comes along, he thinks, you know, he's asking favors. He thinks, where was this guy when they were beating my brains out? Suddenly, he wants me to be a pilot. So he says, OK. Takes him up 30,000 feet, right into some bad weather, shuts off the old schnoz, peels out. So long, guys. You're on your own. They're still somewhere over Siberia, those reindeer, <laughs> looking for a place to land. They say, no good. Who's going to deliver the presents? I said, I don't care. I'm 44 years old. I'm not getting any presents. They said, no, no. So I went back. I came up with one last character, an extraterrestrial who's cut off. That's right. I wrote the first version of E.T. Like, you know, he comes into the little California town, except in my version, they don't help him. They eat him. <laughs> you know, you like that, too. Good. I mean, they point him right to the microwave. They say, there's your little spaceship. So long. He winds up tasting. Please, no. Uh, in a minute, in a minute. There'll be a break in a minute. You know, he tastes a little like snapping turtle, as a matter of fact. Tastes a little like snapping turtle. Anyway, I'm glad I held out. The King of Comedy has been made. I called up the Letterman Show. I said, how would you like to have me on? They said, yeah, but we want to dress it up a little bit. I said, look, dress it up all you want. Just don't chop it off. They said, OK. They said, we're just going to ask you to do a little stand-up comedy. And I said, I've never done that before in my life. But then I thought, how else am I going to get any recognition? I mean, none of you's ever seen a live screenwriter before, have you? Anybody here seen a living, breathing screenwriter? Well, there are a few of you. You're supposed to say no. Well, I figure, you know, I'll go ahead with it. People will know who wrote the movie. <laughs> I figure, what do I have to lose? Better king for a night than for a lifetime. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this, of course, is Paul Zimmerman, the man who uh, wrote the uh, terribly successful motion picture, The King of Comedy. And you've never done stand-up comedy before. Never in my life, and, and you can see why. Now, did you, did you enjoy that experience? Well, I feel a little like Carol Chessman. <laughs> it's like sitting in the... It's really very tough. The one thing that you don't know is how to deal with an audience. You, as a writer, you can write a routine. That's right. But then there's a living, breathing crowd. They are living and breathing, aren't they? they? This is a fine audience. Don't, don't turn on this audience. Um, now, no, uh, how terrific. long did it take you to prepare the act? Uh, two and a half weeks, 24 hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and, and uh, did you try it out on an audience before you did yes, this? Yes, I did. And uh, about half the stuff was thrown out, and that's the stuff I used. Now, now, now which, uh, which audience, uh, where was, who was the uh, there was There was a uh, premiere, a local premiere for the King of Comedy, and people uh, came, and then we had a reception afterwards, and uh, I did it in front of 300 people. And... Uh, it was okay, and uh, I improved it. That was the improved version, yeah. if you can believe it. <laughs> can you imagine what those three all wanted their money back? <laughs> uh, now, you, in, in the screenplay, you had to write De Niro's stand-up. Yeah, but that's for another character. That's the best monologue I could write for somebody who's stra really strange, even stranger than I am, mm -hmm. if that's possible to believe. And uh, I wrote that in 1973. The whole screenplay you wrote. Yeah. Sort of. yeah. Now, uh, is, is there much of uh, you in the character of uh, Rupert? Yeah, a lot. A lot is, and a lot isn't. Yeah. Now, uh, has this been a burning desire for you to do stand-up comedy on TV Used for be. a while? Used to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just burned out. It's funny and, how uh, fast that can happen. And, and what it? have you What have you learned from this experience, Paul? Never to do it again, David. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
Now, I'm glad I don't have to do this for a living, and I, you have my condolences. Now, don't be, don't be discouraged by that reaction. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was, you know, it was very gallant and noble of you to give it a shot, and I, I appreciate you coming on the show, sir. Thank you, thank you. Paul Zimmerman, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, we, uh, we've had to uh, re reschedule a visit with the actor who plays uh, Bud Melman for another evening. That will perhaps be next week. Well... All right, we'll come over to your place and do it. <laughs> uh, I want to thank my guest tonight, Mr. Paul Zimmerman. Thanks again, Paul. Uh, Klaus Kinski, uh, Edward Kennedy, you remember the man who balances things on his face. Paul Schaefer in the band, Mr. Bill Wendell. Monday, Viva, George Miller, and Roger Corman. Have a good weekend. Good night. <laughs> watching the show about a week ago on a Thursday night and you had this real uh, geeky looking guy with a beard who was a screenwriter uh, wrote some movie or something and he thought he was funny and uh, he just was awful and it just kept going on and on and on. Is there any way you could destroy uh, all evidence of that ever happening? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, what you're talking about, uh, last Thursday night we had Paul Zimmerman on, the man who wrote King of Comedy and it was a desire of his all his life to do comedy uh, on a television show and uh, if you stayed through it you know that it was two things it was long and it was awful so I'll be happy to take care of this for you the only existing videotape evidence of his appearance on our show don't waste any time vibrate it back over it okay again do it again Just a joke. It's only a little, just a little joke there. Uh